It is finally here, Mentees. The X-Men Children of the Atom box set. So join me as I take an advanced look at this box set from Marvel Comics. Please stay tuned. And welcome back, Mentees. Now, the very first thing I want to do is give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this box set. I, I'm in awe that they did so thank you all so much now it does come with a poster so it's the nice homage to x-men number one that alex ross did a few years ago and remember we had a contest guess the x-men poster i don't know if y'all remember that from a few months back well, last year sometime let's take a look at the box here so you have an image of the classic team there the giant size team the classic image from Uncanny X-Men 137. Again, another classic lineup. The Children of the Atom logo up here. Not sure if you all can tell. I'm also not sure why I decided to hold this up with all the books in there instead of taking the books out first. But the DNA helix is in there. That's what the pattern is on this gold box set. Nothing really at the bottom except the ISBN number and of course the retail price. And that is $500. Now that's retail. Now, this is the first time I'm opening up this box set so I get to experience this with you all so please forgive me if I can't contain myself. So this is the image that some people want it used for the cover or the front, I'm sorry. And this is the Dave Cockrum image. There's these little magnets in here and that's how it stays shut. And on the inside is the image to giant size number one. Now all the books look like come sealed. Doesn't look like they're um, dust jackets on them. So styrofoam here to keep the books intact as it's being shipped. Let's get that out of there. And I don't know how to do this. I don't know if I'm, you know what? No, we're gonna look at each book. It's X-Men, it deserves that. And it's something that I have been looking for forward to for a long time. So let's look at each book. I will cut out the parts where I'm opening up the plastic though. So let's get this guy out. But before I go any further, I did want to showcase what it looks like inside of the box set. So you have Silver Age volumes one, two, three, and four, The Lost Years, and we'll talk a little bit about that. All new, all different, volumes one, two, and three, and then the companion. The Marvel logo at the top, X-Men logo here, and then each title. For the books and the books themselves have the little dna helix pattern on them now let's take a quick look at each one of these so we're starting it with x-men gifted youngsters where it all began with stan lee and jack kirby let's see red bookend pages there's the pattern and the gold again the contents of the book so what I'll do is I'll put a little box down here somewhere with the contents so I can just focus on the books and the build and I'll look at each and every one of these. Again, just bear with me. So this is where it all began, right? This is where Stan Lee created the X-Men. This is where him and Jack Kirby, who co-wrote, by the way, not just Drew, created these characters. And he's always stated that the reason he came up with the X-Men, which he wanted to call the mutants, by the way, originally, and they said no, uh, was that he was tired of coming up with origins. He was tired of coming up with, oh, this kid got bit by a radioactive spider. This billionaire playboy gets hurt and has to build this iron suit to keep him alive. This kid gets injected with a super soldier serum and he becomes super strong and invulnerable and apparently can be frozen on ice. So. He just wanted to create a group of characters that didn't need an origin, that they were just born that way. And that's where mutants came from. And eventually X-Men for Extraordinary Powers. That is the origin of the X-Men. Here we have volume two. Image of the Mimic right there, who is one of the few new members of the X-Men later on, or in the early stages of X-Men. The Sentinels and Master Mold. Now, what's interesting about the very first volume is it had stories from like Journey into Mystery, Strange Tales, uh, and Fantastic Four. This one, this volume right here, is just purely X Men. This takes us from 14 to 31. Even though I put the little box down there, I still wanted to mention that this one is purely X Men. 
And some of those stories from the first volume, like Journey into Mystery 109 and Strange Tales 120 and Tales of Suspense, have never been printed in the omnibus format or in the epic format. So it's unique to this collection here. Yes, they have been reprinted before in other collections like Thor, but never in an X-Men collection. And here is the mimic, Calvin, who eventually ends up joining the team. But the original five are these five teenagers here, Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Beast, Angel, and Iceman, all led by their teacher, Professor X. Juggernaut in the back. So this is where a lot of the earlier characters first appeared. All the bad guys, Magneto, you have Juggernaut, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, Mimic, the Changeling, who in the Age of Apocalypse is known as Morph, as a throwback to the cartoon. Banshee, and it's interesting to see these characters first appear in these pages because most of them, because of a misunderstanding, are villains. There's the Brotherhood. Hey, speaking of the Changeling and that horrible headdress that he wore. Here is the issue, issue 39. I used to own this. Ah. Um, this is the issue where they get their costumes. So it was a big deal. It seems like nowadays X-Men or any other team member, like, they end up getting costumes left and right within, like, four or five issues. There's a new costume. Or a costume for a special event. Arctic Attack Batman. But back then, it was pretty special. Like, the X-Men had graduated and given themselves costumes, their own design. Let's look at the last volume of the Silver Age. Here we have Twilight of the Mutants. And that classic Neil Adams Havoc cover. So this is probably the one that changes it all. This has Arnold Drake and Roy Thomas writing the book. They wanted to change things up for X-Men because the sales were just not that great. And they needed to be better in order to maintain a monthly schedule. So as a matter of fact, this volume right here, volume four, has the final original issue of the X-Men. And that is issue 66. Because the sales were so bad from 67 to 93, they were just reprints. X-Men didn't have any original stories. Um, the characters went on to other books. Some of them changed. As a matter of fact, that's what The Lost Years is going to be about. But before I talk about that, this does have the beautiful, wonderful artwork by Neil Adams. And this amazing story where you're introduced, or reintroduced rather, to Polaris and Havoc. They, they become kind of like lead players here towards the end. And everything leads up to issue 66 where it just ends and the book is canceled and turned into nothing but reprints. We have Introduction of Sauron. Look at this. Just Neil Adams, man. That guy. Phenomenal artist. Let's take a look at The Lost Years. Now I'm going to take a little break here to actually do a size comparison in case some of you are wondering. I know some of you all sold your Omnis to get the box set. Some of you are still on the fence. Some of you are worried about double dipping. So I hope I'm able to answer all your questions in this video. And in case I'm not, please leave those comments down below. The size of these books are the size of the traditional trade paperbacks. However, they look taller, of course, because of the hardback of the books. But the page size is identical to these. So they're more like the Marvel Premiere hardcovers or probably Masterworks. I don't have any Masterworks left, but yeah. They're the size of those Marvel Premiere standard size hardcovers. Obviously a lot thicker than your standard trade paperbacks. So as thick as these Epic collections. Matter of fact, I think this Epic right here is probably the same content as the Lost Years. We'll look at that in here in a second. And here it is compared to the size of an Omnibus, which is an unfair comparison because we know that Omnis are meant to be oversized and, and thick and big but I did want to make sure I covered everything as far as sizes for you all that are still on the fence here it is the lost years technically volume 5 but I like the fact that they left out Silver Age volume 5 because there really wasn't an X-Men title let's take a look at this this is where the X-Men appear throughout the Marvel Universe and we have appearances of other upcoming X-Men too like Multiple Man and this little character known as Wolverine. So this is almost the exact same content as It's Always Darkest Before the Dawn epic collection. 
Um, but let, let me look through here because it's not the same page count. So I think what they left out of this was Incredible Hulk 182. Not that that's a big deal or anything. Because I think it shows Wolverine for a couple pages after the aftermath of 181. This is also where you see the Beast turn into the blue hairy beast that we all know and love, or gray at first. So those are from the Amazing Adventures 11 through 17. That's where it happened. I love that it didn't even happen in the pages of X-Men. Let's keep going through here. And this is just a courteous reminder to smash that like button and hit that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We've covered a lot of these stories in Old Reader, New Reader. That's live at eight o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesdays. But the notifications button will let you know when our videos are going live. And one other thing I haven't mentioned yet as an early appearance of Banshee outside of the X-Men um, is that this box set comes out on March 4th. Sorry, I just got carried away by just talking about the books and the history of the X-Men. Oh, I was wrong. It does include 182. So what's the missing page count? Let me see. Hold on. Oh, okay. It's just a couple pages from 182. And then going to giant size number four, which is the first appearance of Madrox, the multiple man. And it also doesn't have the covers to 67 through 93. So I wonder if that's somewhere else. Let's keep going. And here we have X-Man the Bronze Age, Volume 1. The iconic image to giant size number one and the image to Uncanny 101. Both of these have just, oh man, so many homages. So this is the thing, this is the, the one, this is the game changer. This is where a guy named Len Wein and Dave Cockrum together they decided to revamp the X-Men. They decided to take a chance. Marvel decided to take a chance and say, hey, look, this title has been canceled. Let's give it to these guys. They introduced a whole lot of new characters. Cyclops is the only remaining original X-Men that decided to stay. In case you've never read these, I'm just going to keep away from spoilers. They go to this island of Krakoa where the original X-Men are. And that's all she wrote. That is history in the making. The new X-Men took over and became more popular than the original. There's Cyclops brooding, that's what he did back then, over the death of one of his teammates. The first, oh, so much happens here. So, Len Wein and Dave Cockrum started this series. But by issue 94, Len Wein was already just the plotter and Chris Claremont was writing the scripts. Then by the issue 96, I think Chris Claremont is just doing the whole thing by himself. He's the head writer, and Dave Cockrum is the artist on the book. Here's the crossover event with Spider-Man. Uh, so you have all these new characters. You have Wolverine, Colossus, Thunderbird, Sunfire, Nightcrawler, Banshee, Storm. And, oh, man, the, the amount of joy these books bring me. Sorry, it's a, it's a little hard to not talk about. I'll talk about the binding and all of that towards the end of the video. And one thing I will say, I I am opening these up for the first time. I'm not stretching the spines or anything like I've shown you all to do on big books, mainly because they're just smaller size hardcovers. And I say small, but they're like 400 pages. Now let's keep going with the next book. Magneto Triumphant, Bronze Age Volume 2. Oh, that is one of my favorite issues favorite covers how i can't imagine having the task of choosing which cover goes to represent a book i've been thinking about doing a video like that like my favorite omnibus covers it has to be a hard and difficult task to state this cover represents everything in this book all 1200 pages are represented by this cover i mean this is a little bit easier because you could have fun with the iconic images by the way this is george perez but by now dave cockrum has stepped away and we have this new young gun named John Byrne taking over the book. And also by now, the new X-Men are introduced to Magneto. The editors at the time were like, we need to bring Magneto back. He was the original bad guy for the X-Men, but he was a baby. What do you do? Anyway, no spoilers. He comes back. Shadow King. Oh man, the fight against Professor X. How can I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. No idea if it's going to be hours long, but believe me, I'm going to try to edit a lot so you're not bored to tears. This is uh, Moses Magnum, who, spoilers, because of a X-Men classic, retcon, 
Apocalypse is the one that helped him. Oh, Mariko. This is our introduction to Mariko. So many classic moments. The first appearance of Alpha Flight. It's the apartment H once there. Little Canadian guy with adamantium claws back. Heroes for hire. Oh. All right, all right, keep going. The fate of the Phoenix. I'll stay away from spoilers. Oh, in issue 141, Days of Future Past. So interesting that they went with the 136 image instead of 137, which I guess has been overused. Everything that Chris Claremont and John Byrne have been setting up for years leads up to this event. We go from the pro we go from saga to saga, and I am not exaggerating when I say we go from epic saga to epic saga. We go from Proteus to the Phoenix Saga to the Dark Phoenix Saga. Oh my God! Yeah, this this book right here. Let me skip a little bit through here. The first Wolverine solo story, 133, where Wolverine is just a badass and takes on the entire Hellfire Club. One of the reasons why he's so many people's favorite character. Oh yeah, this is also the volume where we go from the title X-Men to Uncanny X-Men. So officially it changes X-Men to Uncanny X-Men. So you've probably heard me on video say adjectiveless X-Men because X-Men Volume 2 happened in the 90s with Chris Claremont and Jim Lee, but that's another story. But here's where the title officially changes from X-Men to Uncanny X-Men within these issues. It's so weird to me to be still blown away by this. It, I, I have the original issues. I've got the Omnibus. I had the Masterworks. I've got the Epics. I used to have the Essentials just so I could let friends read this stuff. Uh, I think they were turned off by the black and white. But, man, it, it's crazy that no matter what format, no matter... How many times this reprinted, I still get excited over these amazing stories. These stories that help shape who I am. It, it's I, I, There are no other words to describe this. Spoilers, Phoenix becomes the Dark Phoenix. That's all I'll say. Let's look at a couple of other issues back here. Oh, these are the two-in-one. There's some stuff here from Marvel Treasury Edition 2, 26 and 27. And, of course, the annuals. The annuals are included in here, which started with Giant Size 1, by the way. So that was considered the first annual. And then number 4 is in this one. And here it is. Another epic saga. The two-issue Days of Future Past. Now, some of these we've done old reader, new reader on, if you want to check the channel out for that. We do those live every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. This is the final issue by John Byrne, so 143. Let's look at the extras. I haven't been looking at extras, so you all could be surprised as to what they have. But these are just different variations of the covers for different collections, like trade paperbacks, essentials, hardcovers, and then there's some artwork. A lot of these have been collected in the Omnibus, but if you don't own these in Omnibus format or wanted to get the epics, and some of those epics are out of print, just wanted you to be surprised. Let's look at this final volume. Here is the back of the third volume of the Bronze Age. And here's the front of the companion. Nice. Both the front of the companion and the back are black and white images of these iconic characters. From 141, giant size one. Let's look at, oh, interesting. Let's look and see what's in here. Okay, we have Nod Brand Eck. Should be a few of those in here. Like I think four and eight are the ones that are X-Men centric. Rampaging Hulk. So black and white. I wonder if Bizarre Adventures are going to be in here. And you had to have it. Phoenix, the untold story. After you finish reading the original story, come back and read this. This is the original idea that they had that Jim Shooter and editor said, no, you can't do that. This is the way we want you to handle it. Okay, here's all the house ads, all the promotional stuff. And I bet this is where they're going to keep the covers. Typhoon. This is a character concept by Dave Cockrum for a potential X-Men. I've seen a lot of... I don't think I've ever seen this one. I've never seen this character. Huh. Be interesting to see them hang out in Krakoa. I know that Nightcrawler was originally supposed to be a Legion of Superhero character. Here's all the designs for Jean Grey's costume. And then the final designs for some of the characters. Oh, this is from Friends of Old Marvel, the Foom volume. That, that's been reprinted before. 
Wow. Original pencils by Dave Cockrum. Man. And then original art pages. I like that all these have a border, like a gold border, and that's why it looks like that. There's the covers. So you have X-Men 83, for example, reprinting X-Men 35. That's when it was canceled. One of the things that I noticed they didn't put in here, and I'm sure a lot of you did, and there's no way they would have, they could have rather, because it would have been a lot more pages, and that is the classic X-Men uh, stuff. The stuff that was like the director's cut that Chris Claremont wrote. I wonder if they'll put that in a second collection. Yes, I'm already hoping there's going to be a second collection of this box set. Oh my gosh, these are original color guides from Neil Adams' pages. Nice. And Walter Simonson's, these are reprints right here of stories collected in here. Official Marvel Guide to the X-Men, the Index, the Marvel Index, that's what it is. More reprints. And there's the classic X-Men covers. None of the stuff from classic X-Men, but at least you get the covers. And honestly, if you haven't read X-Men before, maybe it's better to read the original and then go back and read the classic X-Men stuff. That makes it like a director's cut. It's the way I always like to call it. And there's the Tom McFarlane covers for the Marvel Tales Spider-Man featuring the X-Men. Cover to the Omnibus. Omnibus variants. Early years. They got just about everything. Let's see. Afterwards here by Stan Lee. Forwards by Stan Lee. Throughout the years, Roy Thomas. You all know my boy Roy Thomas loves to write and talk, so I'm good with reading this kind of stuff. There's an introduction here by Steve Englehart. More Roy Thomas. Just throughout the years, Chris Claremont, Stan Lee from Masterworks, from Hardcover Collections. You have the original sketch here of Wolverine, who was designed by John Romita, but in the comic books in Hulk 180 and 181, he was drawn by Herb Trimp. Dark Phoenix tapes, there's the untold stuff again. Let's check out the binding. So I picked the one with the most pages. This is the one that has 480 pages, the Lost Years, just so you can see how well they opened up. And it is sewn binding. Here's that eye with all the, when all these pages are bunched together, this is called the signature, so you can see them in there. So thank you very much to my viewer that corrected me on how to properly say that term. These are signatures when they're bunched up like that all going into the inner spine. So there's that eye. Here's another one from the Silver Age Volume 4, just so I'm not playing favorites. And then from the Bronze Age Volume 2. Okay, so we're <laughs> looking, I'm, I can't believe I'm showing video of this, but just in case, because I do want to cover everything, there's our spacers here, so you can put your books, they fit in here, and so they don't hit up top. They put this nice block up there. These are cardboard, but sturdy cardboard, so they don't go and shift everywhere. Now I'm sure some of the questions that I'm going to get are, should I get this instead of the Omnibus version or should I get this instead of the Epics? As far as the X-Men Omnis, you would need the Silver Age 1 and 2, Uncanny 1, and then some of 2. Because 2 takes you all the way to 153. So that is 4 Omnis right there. And Silver Age 1 and 2 are completely out of print. As far as Epics, some of those are out of print and not all of them are out. So it's really up to you on how you want to collect this. You can wait around for the epics. You can wait around for the reprints of the Omnis. And then another thing, of course, you got to think about is the price point. Each one of the Omnis are $100 to $125, whereas the epics are $40 each. And presentation. Or if you want to double dip. So I hope I was able to answer most of those questions within this video. And there you have it. Everything from the beginning of September of 1963 with issue 1 all the way until John Byrne's final issue 143. It's an amazing box set. And as a first for Marvel, this is the first box set we have as a chronological order of characters. Because for the Avengers, they chose stories throughout the years. For Infinity Gauntlet, it was mainly the event with the crossover stuff, the Civil War, same thing. So, hi love to see this i'd love to see spider-man get the same treatment i'd love to see a volume two of this box set just to see how far they get us and it's ridiculous because i have the omnibus and i realize it's double dipping but this is x-man this is something i can open up and give my kids like hey these are sturdy nice hard covers that i can be like here you go good luck going through those silver age stories oh i can't wait for you to get to the phoenix saga because that's the kind of father i am i want them to go through everything so they can appreciate the greatness while they have to go through its ups and downs. I think I've spoken enough. I have no idea how in the end this video is gonna be. If you're interested in the box set, when it comes out on March 4th, you can pick it up from cheapgraphicnovels.com. 
your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And again, one more big thank you to David Gabriel and Marvel Comics for sending us an advanced copy of this box set. Thank you again for watching, everybody. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, the bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. If I left anything out, please let me know in the comments down below, as I like to make sure I covered everything. Again, the box set comes out on March 4th. I know the box set is low in stock at the distributors right now, and I hate to put fear of missing out on anybody, but just in case, if you're wanting to get it, uh, that first week might be the week to get it, because I have a feeling like Infinity Gauntlet, it will sell out. Because, I mean, it is X-Men after all. Thank you again for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.